Welcome to the atelier. I didn't like that one at all. <laughs> I didn't like that. Does it look natural? Yeah, something, something natural. natural. <laughs> uh, so. This started after I left the London School of Furniture. I built guitars in my garage for a while, and 25 years later, there are now 10 of us building our own brand of unique guitars out of our workshop in Canterbury. Hi there, I'm Alistair Atkin from Atkin Guitars down in Canterbury in the UK. This week we're going to be seeing uh, Tom talk about our 2000th model painted by Mr Ian Ward. Um, we're also going to have Andy Goodall, my old mate, explaining how the CNC machine works or how he's getting on with it. Uh, we have Mark lasering out some tops. Enjoy the show. If you want to win a t-shirt, please hang around till the end and there'll be a little competition. Cheers. Today, Raph, we are going to cut out a guitar back and a guitar top. Uh, we've seen the laser in a couple of previous episodes, mostly the embracers and the thick bits of wood. One of the primary uses for the laser we have is cutting the shapes for the backs and the tops, so they all end up perfect, like these ones that are pre-cut. Um, so these boards were jointed at the end of last week, so rested over the weekend. So we've got our mirror matched plates, kind of book matched. And this is for a new style of guitar. We haven't named it yet, we're still debating about our names, and Alistair may have something to say about, a little bit about that. <clears throat> but we're recreating a really popular guitar from the 30s, which is quite an understated design. And it's an all mahogany guitar, so it gets mahogany back and sides. Um, and unusually for the Aki guitars, we're gonna put mahogany tops on it as well. We've made a couple. Um, this is number three that we've made. Um, so what we're going to do is take these materials through the thicknesser, get the glue off, get them down to the desired thicknesses. Um, we worked thicknesses for the backs and the tops, so we'll clean them up, mark the centre lines and then we'll bring them back up here, get onto the new laser and cut them out. Um, we use the laser for all the tops and all the backs um, and you'll see the benefit of doing that is that we get a whole load of little bits that otherwise we'd have to make by hand straight out of the top and we get a repeatable shape, so it's always the same. So, we'll take this downstairs to the thicknesser. It's a very noisy machine, so I'm going to have my headphones on and not talk while we use it. But you'll get to see these going through, um, and each pass it goes through. I'm probably coming down maybe 0.1 or 0.2 millimetres. It's really small increments, so we get a perfectly flat, smooth finish. So we'll go and do that, and then we'll buzz back up and cut them out. So we're at the thicknesser now. Um, we say thicknesser, it's actually a sanding finishing machine. And inside of it is a massive sanding belt running across these three pivots. So once we start the machine up, the bed starts moving to move the material. And at the same time, the belt's moving really, really quick. Um, and it will just sand off small increments. It's designed to flatten and finish things, um, which is part of what we're doing because we want the glue off, we want a flat board. Um, but also coming down 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeter at a time, it's really good for thickness in. We're taking off approximately half a millimetre, um, which is a really, really small amount, but our tolerance on that is like 0.1, so we've got to be really precise. So we can't run it with the door open. So Who's been shut. moving my hand? Who comes to me? Keep your toes in. <laughs> um, so belt goes on at the bottom, as you see. This will move our material through thickness up. And then with the belt wearing away, which will make an awful lot of noise, it will start scratching these off. You'll probably see it as it comes through. I go really, really slow and steady. So it'll be probably to take half a millimetre off of that. I'll probably pass it through there eight to 10 times. Um, and that way we don't get any dips or grooves or anything weird going on with it. So I'm gonna go and turn on the extractor so we don't breathe in the dust and get it running. So as we pass these through, um, we'll start with a kind of rough estimate from the calipers, or pretty accurate, right, about four millimetres. Target for this is 3.5, uh, sorry, it's three millimetres. So we've got about a mil to take off. So up here, we've got a little indicator that tells us the thickness the machine's at. So we're gonna get it to approximately the four mil. And as you can see, it's not the most accurate of adjustment. We've got there to four mil. This will give us an estimate and it'll be within about 0.2. So as they go through, we don't trust this, we check with the calipers. Um, when we get within about 0.2 of my target, which is three mil in this case, I'll get on it with the calipers so we can get ourselves exactly there. Um, so that's it, we're going to make some noise.
So, been through there, I think we made maybe seven or eight passes. Um, we've got no bump in the middle where the glue joint was, which is really important. All good. And our final thickness for this, because the top is going to be about three millimetres at this stage. Um, so, we're good on that. We've got the right measurement that we need for the top. And we're absolutely golden. Nice. Right, so we've thickness these through, as you saw downstairs. So, we've got our back, which you didn't see me do which is now ready to go, so we're gonna cut this out in a moment. And we also had what was gonna be our top, but I did get a little bit distracted talking to you, Raph, so I've over-thicknessed it. So we can't use this for a top now, because it's too thin. So this will be parked, and we will use it for a back, um, and we will cut another top to make one. Um, we'll put this in the laser to show the back cutting, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. With the top cutting, apart from repeatable shapes, which is really useful for us, the other reason we use the laser is that when it cuts the tops out, we can mark out the exact position for the X brace um, and where those braces end up at the perimeter of the guitar. I think in episode four or five, we go into that in loads and loads of detail. But that's the main benefit for us of cutting the tops on the laser is we get precision placement for our braces. Um, for the backs, similar benefit. There's not so many braces, but it does indicate where they go and it cuts them out really quick. So Ref, I don't know if you're gonna go slow-mo, but at the moment, these come out of the laser in about 90 seconds. So mighty quick. So we'll whack it in 90 seconds later. We'll have a back. So we've got the back we just saw now placed in the laser. So we've got it positioned as we need it. As we need it is we want it perfectly centered. So we center our laser cut from the middle line. Generally on this back, you can actually see. So we're in the middle of the top. And then we bring the head down to the bottom. We're absolutely sure we've got it in the middle because we don't want the line on the back of the guitar to be anything other than bang in the middle and perpendicular to the top plane. And that's set and ready to go. Um, I'm going to shut the lid, hit the button. I'm going to turn the noisemaker on as well because we have to extract all the heat. So we have our back freshly off of the laser cutter, so as you can see, um, it's the shape we wanted, which is always a good start. Um, but most importantly of all when cutting these backs, we've got the right shape um, and it's perfectly centered. So we've got our back strip bang in the middle of the back and it's running perfect top to bottom. Um, inside the back, as I mentioned before, it went in, part of the laser cutting, we cut, but we also etch and mark. So we've got our position for our four back struts um, in the center. So when we put our strip on, we know we're taking sections out in the right place, but also the positioning from left to right. So those marks will ensure that when we strut it or brace it, we end up with something that's consistent. So all of our 0012s in this case, will have their braces in the same position because Danny and I always work to the marks. So that's it, it's ready for its next step when it becomes one of these. And then after that, it becomes a box and eventually it becomes a guitar. Welcome to the atelier. Got a very special guitar that I've been requested to show everyone at home. This is number 2000. This is a big milestone for the company. All very pleased with the uh, with progress being made, but this is a very special one because it's gold leaf finish. Real gold leaf, 18 carat is it? I don't know about the carat, don't quote me on that, but it's real gold. It's all under lacquer now. It's been painted by our good friend Ian, who uh, does wonderful artwork. A lovely tree with flowers in there. It's all got a clear coat on it now, so we can't really mess it up now. But the fretboard, woo! Lord have mercy, boy! That's a lovely, all mother of pearl with an ebony board. Not a lot of ebony left on it now, is there? Because it's all pearled up. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all gonna be engraved as well, I hear tell, so that's gonna get even fancier. That'd be a nice one for me to put together. Yeah, there is the neck, very nice it is too. Here's the body. It's got a, a scene with, it seems to be blue tits on it, I think. Blue tits? Yeah. On a nice uh, willow 
Is it a willow? I think it is a willow, mm. a weeping willow. In flower as well, which is nice. Some rosebuds there for you. Ah, uh, you left a rosebud on there, love. So there you go, mate, gold leaf. That's the birds on the back as well. Look at that. That is art. Now, now we're getting into art. Very special edition guitar, just for the special occasion. So we'll be keeping you posted on this one as and when it goes together, and might even do a little setup, a uh, little uh, recap, just quickly see me sorting it out, getting it all really nice and tidy for some very lucky, lucky guitar player out there. And we're in the downstairs workshop with us now. I think you've been in here a few times before. Um, but essentially this is where all the heavy lifting gets done. We do the major parts of the cutting before it goes upstairs to sort of finesse, you know. The, the master craftsmen are upstairs basically, we're just, we're no one down here. No one even knows we're down here, to be honest, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we've got CNC machines, which there is one of them, this is CNC 2. And today we are doing the neck blocks. If you'll excuse me while I just get this started. And away we go. So that will run a program now that will cut the neck blocks. Um, what else have we got in here? We've got the sander up here. Um, if you can hear me over the noise now. Um, it's used for all kinds of things. The lads come down from upstairs to use this. It just saves a lot of hand work, to be honest. But, um, so yeah, that's that. Um, we have a bandsaw. Um, again, this is all the rough cutting down here. Like I said, the boys do the finessing upstairs, so a lot of the wood just gets rough cut on there. Now, I believe that you've already seen Mark today using this machine, um, so I won't bother informing you about any of that. Um, in here we have the routers. This is for the necks and also for all the uh, bindings that go on. The lads come down from upstairs and use those. We don't really get involved with those down here. Oh, I'll save that one, I'll save that one. I think you already know the story behind that. Um, and this is CNC1. Again, same as the other one. On this one we mainly do bridges uh, and fretboards. Uh, so, yeah, so we're currently doing bridges, getting those done today, and then they'll be taken upstairs for, uh, for fitting. No. And there it is. Already, I think we're gonna try and get this in sometime this week, maybe, I'm not sure. I don't know, they don't tell me much. The less I learn, the better, to be honest. But um, yeah, so once this is set up, um, this is what we're gonna be running the, uh, the electric uh, parts on. So yeah, all good. Thanks for watching the show, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel below. You can see us on Instagram and Facebook, and now we've joined TikTok, imagine that. I don't know what we're doing with it yet, but some of the lads seem to know what they're doing. Um, if you wanted to win that T-shirt, come this way. Now, um, who is this? First person to answer that question gets a free Atkin Guitars t-shirt. See you next week.